Hey there, Jeff Manchester, Manchester Music, welcome. Months ago, Buyer Dynamic released a bunch of products as part of their Creator Pro X series of microphones, headphones, aimed ostensibly at capturing some of the emerging creator market that was around before the pandemic and certainly after the pandemic hit too. Now, they were kind enough to send me the complete lineup from that release, including the mics and the headphones. So click the link above to watch those videos. And they're going to be in the description too. When the headphones video I produced as part of that creator series was dropped, many were asking me, what's the difference between the DT990 Pro 250 ohms and the new DT900 Pro Xs? Well, I finally got my hands on a pair of the DT990 Pros and have been listening back and forth between the Pros and the DT900 Pro Xs. And in this video, I wanna share my thoughts on what it's been like to go between the headsets, the major differences, the strengths, the weaknesses, etc. Now, as ever, before we get started, please subscribe if you aren't already, leave a comment, I truly read them all. In fact, this video got made because enough people left comments on the last video, etc., etc. It means a lot. So, I've got the older DT990 Pros, and in my right hand, I've got the DT900 Pro Xs. So let's talk about the important physical differences between these two headsets. Now, one major difference that you'll notice right away is that the cables are completely different between the headsets. We have a three meter coiled cable on the Pros. Well, it's more like three meters when you unfurl it, otherwise it's like a meter and change. And on the X's, which is what I'll be calling them from now on, you've got a straight cable, two in fact, which is pretty generous, a three meter and a 1.8 meter cable. Now, depending on where you come down on the coiled versus straight, that might be a big deciding factor, especially because you can't unhook the cable from the headset on the pros, unless you really know what you're doing, of course, and I don't. Whereas on the X's, yeah, you have many XLRs, you can swap them out for coiled, I suppose, or different cables if that's what tickles your fancy. Personally, the coiled cables are definitely cleaner on the desk, which is where I've got mine, that's where they live. And the straight cables can get a little bit messy and loopy. So judging from the comments, actually, the new X's uh, seem to be what people were happier with when they ditched the coiled for straight cable. So it's really just gonna come down to what you personally like. Now, obviously the look is different, but also familiar, right? You've got this perforated thing going on with both. They're both open back after all. The trademark felt pads on each uh, are there too, except in the X's, they're much easier to remove than on the Pros. I did have a tug off camera, which is weird to say, uh, and they did come off on the older uh, 990s, but they were a bit of a challenge to put back on and they didn't look as slick after I tried to reseal the vinyl material back to the cup architecture. So it is what it is. The felt on the X's is a little darker than on the Pros, which might make them harder to find if you need to grab these for work. Um, after all, the whole headset is itself very black, very dark, very gray, very Batman. So maybe the added glimmer of the older X's, including the white text on the side that says DT990 Pro 250 ohms, is a good thing for dark studio people. I don't know. One massive difference is in the weight between these two. They're both designed for mixing, mastering, stuff that leaves them on your head for a long time. And the Pros are 250 grams without the cable versus the Xs, which are 350 grams. That's an extra 100 grams. Not that you feel it that much. It's still pretty light, all things considered. I've worn heavier headphones. So enough about the physical stuff. Let's talk sound. The differences between these two sonically is striking. Now, before we get to it, I'll say that I'm talking about the sound without sound ID reference correction. Both of the headsets are available as presets in the sound ID reference app, which I did test them out uh, with and without correction. And I'm gonna say more on that later, but I just wanna talk about the pure sonics of these two. 
Out of the box, no correction. The pros are at 250 ohms compared with the X's, which are 48 ohms. So I did have to drive them a bit more on my interface to get a decent level. It's all good though. The song I tested uh, was a flak version of Beyonce's new Break My Soul track. Lots of bass, lots of treble, lots of fun. Buyer says that the DT990 Pro is an open, dynamic headphone with exceptional quality suitable for uh, the most demanding professional and audiophile applications. So let's assume critical listening is on that list. Stuff like mixing, mastering, restoration, repair, etc. So how do they sound? Well, in my test, the Pros had a top-end bump, which made them uh, more trebly, still silky, but very bright. The bottom of the kick was super present too, which makes sense. We're dealing with a nominal frequency response of 5 to 35,000 hertz. So they almost have an elevated bass and treble, which I didn't expect after using the X's for so long. I wouldn't say these headphones are neutral. They have a signature, which you might like or you might not like. With correction though, I was surprised. A lot of the top end was attenuated a lot. A subsonic bump got added, the lows went up, the upper mids went up too. It was a little strange, a little extreme. After enough back and forth with and without correction, I found the highs to be a little overhyped. Still silky, but they definitely benefited from a little correction from the sound ID in the top end. As for noise rejection and stuff, I hope it's clear that these are open headphones. They're designed to let the room in, so to speak. I just say that because I see a lot of people complaining about the ambience noise leakage and sound transmission, but they are open. It's a feature, not a bug. Anyway, the pros are a joy to listen to for long periods of time, as they're a little lighter, uh, but it does make a slight difference when you wear them on your head for a while. They're a little tight on my head, but I think once you break them in, they'll be fine. In conclusion, this is not a neutral headphone. And if the high end is harsh, you can obviously use some EQ, some sound correction, or throw some tissue in there. But if you like the high end, cool. Let's move on to the X's. So yeah, they're heavier. Not by much, but I think you'll feel it a little bit if you're going back and forth between headsets. The sound is really interesting too. They're somehow tighter and flatter than the Pros, which I didn't expect. The top end bump, on the pros just isn't here. Though the top end is still somewhat bright, just not as bright in the same way as the top end was bright on the pros. The low end is smooth and tight. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but guys, these headphones are far more neutral, in my opinion, than the pros, which is not what I expected. For the nerds, you've got a nominal frequency response of five to 40,000 Hertz. So, so 5K uh, more in the high end than the pros. But with correction, that's when these headphones really shine. The adjustments that occur are similar to the pros. So the high end comes down, the subsonic bump comes in, but the low, the mid and the highs are pretty unscathed. I was pretty impressed. The lows ultimately are warm and pleasant. The highs are smooth and the whole sound is very stable and inviting. I did find the X's to be really sturdy too, and they're comfortable and that makes sense because I'm a little biased. I've been wearing these for a long time, longer than the pros. So what's my overall verdict? Overall, I think I prefer the X's because what I'm after is a neutral sound. But some folks might prefer the smiley low end curve um, on the lows and the highs from the pros. And if you've got headphone correction, what it really comes down to is the physical look and feel of the headsets, the coiled versus straight cable, the ohms, the impedance, and the fact that a lot more parts are frankly easier to swap out on the X's. You can swap stuff out, replace it, customize it, and so that might make a big difference to you. So, do you have a different opinion to mine? Let me know in the comments, and if there's another headset that you want me to review or check out, please let me know too in the comments down below. Here's another gear review I did, which might be interesting to you, and with that, take care. Thank you.